In 2010, the Caribbean nation of Haiti was struck by a magnitude 7 earthquake. An estimated 316,000 people were killed. For comparison, Chile in South America has had 6 magnitude 7 earthquakes in the last 100. The death toll from all 6 of these earthquakes put together was 2. The point I'm trying to make is that natural disasters impact some places worse than others. This is what hazard risk is all about. Looking at different parts of the world and finding out why they may be more heavily impacted by natural disaster than others. As always, we'll start this video by saying that we are keeping it simple. There are many different factors that affect how at risk places might be when it comes to natural hazards. Too many in fact. So this video will only cover three of the most important ones. Let's go. The first factor that we'll look at is climate change. This is quite a big subject which will be covered in several future videos, but for now, this is all you need to know. The world is getting warmer, and it's causing significant changes to the weather patterns all over the planet. But okay, we hear you say, how does that link to hazard risk? Well, if places are currently at risk of weather hazards like tropical storms, flooding, or drought, Climate change is going to put these places at greater risk. This is because those hazards are much more likely to happen, which we call frequency, and when they do, they are probably going to be longer lasting and more powerful, which we call severity. As you can imagine, if hazards become more frequent and severe in some parts of the world, we would say those places are at higher risk. Another way climate change can affect risk is by causing those hazards to start affecting places they haven't affected before. For example, tropical storms need sea temperatures of 27 degrees Celsius or higher to form. If the planet continues to get warmer, more parts of the ocean will reach that critical temperature, allowing tropical storms to form in more places and travel further without losing their strength. This means that some places that previously never had to worry will now be increasingly at risk from tropical storms. And the same goes for flooding, drought and several other hazards in different parts of the world. Next up is urbanization, which means how built up are places. Take a look at this village. There isn't much here, so we would say it isn't very urbanized. On the flip side, a huge city like New York has buildings, roads, power, water and much more, so we would say this is a very urbanized place. The way urbanization affects hazard risk is really quite simple. The more urbanised a place is, the more risk there is from a natural hazard. This is because there are more people living there, meaning the social impacts would be more severe, and more things that can be damaged or destroyed, making the economic impacts also more severe. Finally, we'll look at probably the most important factor of all, how level of development can affect hazard risk. A country's development means how advanced it is. Typically, the population of a country with a high level of development will have a better standard of living thanks to being educated, having access to healthcare, safe drinking water and earning more money. We often call these countries HICs, short for High Income Country. You may have also heard these being called ACs, short for Advanced Country, or MEDC, short for More Economically Developed Country. They all mean pretty much the same thing. The opposite to this is an LIC, or Low Income Country, where the level of development is considered quite low compared to other countries. People receive less of an education, they don't always have access to good quality healthcare or even clean water, and they do not earn as much money on average. Alternatives for this you may have heard could be LIDC, short for Low Income Developing Country, or LEDC, short for Less Economically Developed Country. So if a natural hazard like a volcanic eruption, earthquake or tropical storm could happen to both an HIC and an LIC, the LIC would be significantly more at risk. Buildings are likely to be weaker, hospitals may not be able to cope with more injuries, 
People may be less prepared for what to do when disaster strikes. Emergency services may be poorly trained. Honestly, the list of ways development affects hazard risk is huge, which is why it's such an important factor to think about. That is all for this video. We hope we've been of some help to you understanding hazard risk. Please remember to like and subscribe. Also to hit the little bell dinghy if you want to be notified when we upload a new video. Thank you for watching. You've been listening to The Mountain Man and watching the work of Michael Deluxe. And remember, keep it simple.